Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. So let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So, first off, I hope everybody is having a great um, day or night. I hope everybody's weekend was great. Uh, we have been watching a few things kind of unfold in regards to like the legality processes behind a Ripple and, of course, XRP. And uh, we have a few things to talk about. This is going to go up a little bit later, but uh, this still is pretty significant. So first off, there was a civil case versus the OFAC, which was recently announced. This is regarding the tornado cash incident, and it is arguably the most important case in crypto. Coinbase and Brian Armstrong are not known for their aggressiveness against uh, government regulators. Uh, so helping fund the case speaks volumes, and we do see that we are you know now at the point in time where these large crypto exchanges and companies like coinbase are fighting back against regulators i think that this is incredible to see and we do see down here complaints uh, levied against the treasury ofac in the case against tornado cash uh, claiming they've exceeded their constitutional authority, and I agree as well. Um, I think that when we really kind of look at a lot of things happening right now within crypto, we are seeing a major overreach in regards to power and as well as the legality process, uh, especially with like even the SEC. And uh, Coinbase is a supporter, being a validator of transactions exposes one to future liability, hence the support of the suit. And down here we do see filed in the U.S. District Court, Western District of Texas plaintiffs use Ethereum and have been roped in the SDN list by association to torno uh, tornado. Sorry, I cannot talk. Uh, tornado Cash blacklisted wallets. It's so ridiculous they would even attempt this. Likely a regulatory carve out. And uh, yeah, I think that this is a big issue. You know, similar to the XRP lawsuit. You know, we've been talking about the XRP lawsuit for well over a year now, um, and it is probably one of the longest ongoing legality issues within crypto. And I think that a lot of people actually have a very bad viewpoint on it, even still. Uh, most have kind of changed their outlook on it because a lot has changed since the inception of the SEC case. Um, I think that with this tornado cash stuff, you know, not only do I think that, you know, this is... I mean, it's not really in regards to like XRP. Like, it has no strong connection to XRP. All I wanted to mention with this is that this is what we want to see in crypto: is these companies fighting back. This is why I said, you know, XRP being sued as a security is it's kind of like a love-hate sort of idea. Um, you know, you hate to see it because it is something that one initially on everybody thought that it was the end of xrp that xrp was going to zero blah 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 whatever um those who have supported xrp for the longest time and did their research knew that that was not the case but it did leave a bad taste in a lot of individuals mouths around xrp but the good news about that is that ripple was the one that was sued ripple was the one that was sued and ripple is a company that can fight back they have you know the not only the finances for it, um, but they have an incredible team behind them as well fighting with them. This is why I said, you know, if it was any other, you know, company in this space uh, in Ripple shoes, you know, this case would not still be ongoing. They would have settled out. They would have taken the L and they, you know, would have went on with their day. This is why I love to see Ripple continuously fighting the good fight. And um, I think that this is great to see Coinbase fighting back as well. And, you know, this is a very important case. And I thought that this was something interesting to mention. Also, talking about the SEC lawsuit, we seen a huge announcement today from the digital chamber. We do see the chamber is wading into the Ripple versus SEC case. Expect something similar to what it filed in the Telegram case. And the argument is that although the sale of XRP might have been a security, the token is not inherently a security. Similar to John E. Deaton, just not as compelling. And uh, shout out to Jeremy Hogan for this. But yes, this is very, very interesting. And this does say just coming soon. No specific ETA. Um, but this is just exhibit a, this is incredible. And also, yes, you could see Brad Garling house. You could see a few other things as well. We do see anyone else see, you know, Brad Garling house right above exhibit. And yeah, I mean, this is going to be something very, very interesting. It's going to be very cool to see what this actually does, um, you know, hold within it. You know, if this is going to be something similar to the telegram case, then this is going to be big. I'm just going to say it right now. And 
just remember, we recently reported on the, the you know September 19th uh, within the Ripple and SEC case, the end game. Yeah, I think that things are lining up perfectly for this fall time frame, and I'm very, very excited. And I do think that everyone else out there should also be very, very excited as well. And also, we did see a major update from the Fed, the FDIC, the OCC as well, to commit to implementing Basel 3 Endgame as soon as possible. Now, for all of those individuals out there that don't know about Basel 3, it got implemented back in like 2007 to about like 2009 or so. Um, it was really to combat the 2008 financial crisis. And now we are seeing them push to Basel 4. Uh, we do see down here in a joint statement issued Friday morning, the Federal Reserve, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency said implementing the Basel 3 endgame, also known as Basel 4, would make the banking system more resilient, and doing so is a priority for the agencies. Now, again, we don't have a ton of information on Basel 4. Uh, we broke it down a little bit with uh, BIS. They had a report on it. You know, they do mention digital assets quite a bit. They also do mention um, liquidity. Liquidity is mentioned quite a bit in that Basel 4 breakdown, which also kind of led me to believe that XRP could very well be, you know, utilized within this new system. Now, what do I believe is going on with this implementation? What do I believe is behind the scenes with this? Well, let's look into it. So, Recently, on the 2nd, we did report on Ripple participating on the Digital Dollar Project CBDC Sandbox program. Now, this is nothing too, too crazy, but they are working on a CBDC. Uh, the U.S. has been watching things unfold rapidly you know, in foreign nations, uh, specifically around the BRICS nations. They are working on crypto-driven payment systems. They are also you know, working within uh, a gold standard. They are stockpiling massive amounts of gold and they're not the only ones. We've been seeing a lot of central banks stockpiling massive amounts of gold. Why? Well, I do believe, and I, I know that a lot of people think that XRP is going to be backed by gold. I don't believe that. Um, I think that the CBDCs will be backed by gold. And um, I think that they will be issued out on DLTs for a medium of exchange means. Uh, the ones that are the you know most efficient ones, tried and tested, are going to be most likely the number one choice. This is why I do believe that the XRP ledger will actually be the number one choice um, ultimately for you know issuance of CBDCs because of its time frame. Just re recently, we talked about how it's been you know proven you know to be a main player for over 10 years. So again, when we look at CBDCs, you know I think that this is going to be the major plan behind this. I also believe that stablecoins will be talked about within this as well, and you know digital assets, liquidity, stablecoins, all of that plays a big part in this. And also talking about CBDCs, you know, it, it's almost time, you know, for the US to move in on the next major update here. Why do I say that? Well, go back in time a little bit. So on this website, this is the CBDC tracker.org website. You can actually go back all the way to 2014 when we did see, you know, the first initial announcements around this. Uh, the first one was Finland. They canceled their project. This was the first major update. Also, there was um, an update in regards to like research around uh, Uruguay. Um, but if we go to, I think it was like maybe 2015 of March or so. I believe it was this, or no, it might have been 2016 that I'm thinking about. Um, if we go to 2016, this is when Canada uh, really kind of started to move in. And then we've seen a few other ones, you know, some smaller areas. Uh, but the United Kingdom was also another one to play a role here. Now, within this time frame, uh, it took about two years for this to take place. Uh, you go into another two years. We'll go to April of 2018. Here is where, you know, in two years, you did see the proof of concept launch as well around Canada. It's been taking about two years on average for a lot of these areas um, to really kind of move on to the next major step. Now, if we go to about 2020 of April, now remember, this is right around uh, the time frame of the COVID-19 outbreak. Um, this is when a lot of you know areas were really kind of streamlining their you know process on CBDCs. This is where we did see, in two years by the way, Canada moved to a pilot. 
And if we go to another two years, which was April of 2022, you know, Canada did not move in on anything here, but we did see the U.S. move in on research. To me, a lot of these CBDCs are going to start to rapidly shift. We are going to be seeing a lot of, you know, pilots as well as launched projects. And I think that this is going to be very, very exciting because it is going to play a big role around, you know, digital assets as well. You know, what DLT will be chosen here? In fact, the XRP ledger has been chosen on multiple occasions. And I believe that when we really kind of look at the XRP ledger, okay, first off, just recently, Ripple did confirm that CBDC announcements are coming soon. We broke this down a little bit. And I do think that this is going to be very interesting. Shout out to Mac Attack XRP on Twitter. He does say it's shaping up to be a very interesting autumn for Ripple. In the coming time, the team of one of the largest blockchains is scheduled to announce new partnerships within the CBDC domain. Is this an opportunity for XRP growth? I do completely agree because when we just talked about um, yesterday, you know, the secret sauce and stuff uh, within XRP, we do see here. In case you missed it, XRP Ledger contributor Woe Jake shares his estimations of XRP Ledger's federated sidechain's role in the development of CBDCs. XRP Ledger could become the go-to platform for CBDCs, and here's how. Now, this is a huge article. Like, in, There's a ton of information within this to really kind of read up on uh, the breakdowns on how this could very well be the case. Um, it's more so a bridge system uh, utilizing XRP as a main bridge. Um, but also, there's a lot more to this than just that. I think that everyone should go and um, look into this. But it's based on liquidity. Like, liquidity is the focus point. And it's going to be a one-stop shop solution for governments and businesses. We do see down here, like, however, the XRP ledger is not mature enough to onboard such a complex infrastructure as, you know, is. Um, it should gain a user-based liquidity and talents for the next phases of development. As of quarter four, 2022, the XBridge amendment that would activate the federated sidechain's design is being reviewed and tested in the rippled code base. Mr. Jack added. Now, I do completely agree with this. I think that we, we need to see a little bit more testing to take place. Remember, all of this is not going to go live all at once i think that that idea of like the flip the switch moment is a little bit flawed um i think that a lot of these major cbdc's and stuff will go live initially on to test within these ledgers which i think is crucial like that's why you haven't really seen a lot of these cbdc's launching a lot of them are in proof of concept and piloting they're running testing they're seeing how you know durable the system actually is before going fully live because they don't want any mis like they want this to be as perfect as possible so you know, when we talk about the XRP ledger, yeah, I don't think that it is mature enough because I think that we still need a lot more testing to take place here. I think that we need a little bit more growth. But again, you know, I say this very lightly. If the XRP ledger is not ready for this, no other ledger in the space really is. Because again, remember, you know, the XRP ledger has been around for over 10 years. It is probably one of the most tried and tested XRP or ledgers out there. Sorry. Um, and when we look at XRP, yes, I do believe that XRP will play a vital role here as a bridge currency, an exchange of means, if you will, uh, between a lot of these CBDCs. That's why I'm very excited for the future uh, within these CBDCs and what is going to be happening next, specifically around the Fed, the FDIC, and the OCC uh, with this Basel 4 move. Uh, remember, you know, the Basel 4 move doesn't necessarily need to revolve around crypto, uh, but I do believe that it will be because it is focused on resiliency as well as really kind of focusing on making the banking system more reliable, focused on efficiencies within, you know, settlement, things like that. Um, it's a it's a main focus point from them as well as the base of four breakdown including digital assets liquidity at the you know forefront of it so to me this is most likely going to be a little bit of a hands-on approach to jump into the digital dollar project to jump into you know cbdc development and things like that and uh, i'm going to be watching the cbdc tracker quite a bit i'm also going to be keeping up with the news around uh what the u.s is doing because again you know as the BRICS nations are moving very fast the u.s really has to you know stomp on the gas and get going because they will fall behind and they will you know, lose their U.S. dollar dominancy if they do not start moving fast quickly or fast. Sorry, 
Um, so with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day, beautiful night, wherever you guys are on this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.